All right, guys, so we're going to do a couple more general PGFs. The first one's going to be an easy one. We've done a very similar one. We did discrete uniform, but we did it from one to six before. So we're going to go ahead and look at a discrete uniform that can have a general number of terms, as many as we want. The idea is going to be the same, right? We already know that the probability for each event is one over n because there are n terms. That's given right here. And so uh, for discrete uniform, the probability is 1 over n. So just like with all the other types of questions like this, we're going to go ahead and write the PGF equals the probability of t to the x power. x is 1 here, so t to the 1, plus 1 over n t squared, so t to the second power, tn again. And we just keep going, sorry, t to the x, all the way up to 1 over n times t to the n, right? Uh, from here, we can go ahead and factor the 1 over n. Okay, we're just trying to simplify this as much as possible. So t plus t squared plus t cubed, so on and so forth. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways that you can go about uh, simplifying this. I'm going to go ahead and take out another t so that my first term is 1. And so I'm going to make this t over n times 1 plus t plus t squared all the way up to the t n minus 1. Because now what I have is a geometric series where u1 is equal to 1, n is equal to n in terms, and then r is equal to t because I'm multiplying by t every time. And so my final answer will look something like this, that the PGF for a discrete uniform will be t over n times 1 minus t to the n power over 1 minus t. And that's our answer. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. We've done a couple of those and it's getting a little more comfortable. This is the type of question that they could ask you on an IB exam is to prove that the PGF for a discrete uniform random variable with values 1 to n is this. And so you should be able to go through that process and, and prove it. All right, we're going to go ahead and do one. This next one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but uh, it, it is still going to be similar to some of the ones that we've already done. Okay, we've done it for geometric. We did that in the previous video. But we're going to go ahead and look at negative binomial now. All right? So uh, you can read through the question, pause it if you need to, but I'm going to go ahead and go on. Um, so it does give us recognize, I'm, I'm, I'm looking right at the beginning. It does give us all of this right here. So we're hoping that eventually we can turn this summation thing, we want it to look like this and then we should be able to turn it into this simpler formula over on the right so that we don't have to do the summation, right? Most of the time when we're writing a PGF, when we're simplifying, we're trying to get rid of that summation because the summation is what makes it difficult to do quickly mathematically. So if we can simplify that, then we're, we're pretty much good to go on, on creating our PGFs, all right? Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and, and have a look at this question, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do, much like with all the others, uh, is we're just going to write that the PGF is equal to the summation. This time I, I know that I'm going to ha have an infinite number. It's not n number, so I'm actually going to go. So it's going to start at x equals r, right? That's given up here in the question. It says x starts with r and then moves up all the way to infinity. So x goes from r to infinity. So we're going to multiply it by the probability as x equals x. Uh, of t to the x power. All right, so from there, we're going to go ahead. We know that the probability of negative, uh, negative binomial is this right here. Um, that's in your formula packet. We worked it out in previous lessons. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in for the probabilities. So we're now gonna have that the PGF, GT, is equal to the summation from x equals r up to infinity of that stuff right there. So I've got x minus 1, r minus 1, p to the r, 1 minus p to the x minus r, just like that. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to remember, oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot the, the t to the x here. Um, a, a couple of different things. One, we remember in the, in the uh, geometric one, we took out the constants. So this p to the r, we're going to go ahead and pull that out 
Okay, the second thing is that I'm recognizing that in this up here is that the t and the 1 minus p both need to have the same power. So because the 1 minus p has x minus r here, and because the p is to the r power, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take out t to the r power, and I'm going to pull that out as well. So I'm going to have a p to the r and a t to the r that are both getting pulled out there. Now if I pull out a t to the r, that means the t is now going to be to the x minus r, because when I divide it, when I pull it out, I subtract the exponents. I'm taking that out. So what this is going to look like now is gt equals p to the r, t to the r, or pt to the r, however you do it, and then the summation from x equals r to infinity of x minus 1, r minus 1, took out the p to the r, now I've got 1 minus p times t all to the x minus r power, just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is looking at what I have here and then looking back at the original question, right? I notice that here I've got t times one minus p, which I have, t times one minus p, but it is to the i power. And I see the i coming up a couple of times. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that x minus r is i, right? i is just a variable, it's representing a number. So why can't it be x minus r? right? So we're going to make x minus r i. Now that's going to result in a couple of things, right? That means that x is going to equal i plus r, okay? That's going to be important here, okay? The other thing is um, if, uh, well, let's, let's go ahead and see what, what happens so we start to put that in, all right? So we'll go gt equals the pt to the r is going to stay the same. We're not changing that at all. Okay, the summation here, right, the summation here used to go from x to r, okay, but x is equal to i plus r, okay? Now, if I, x, I also know that x minus r is i, right? So here, if I subtract r from each side, okay, then I'm going to have x minus r equals zero or in other words, i equals zero. And so I'm gonna have then the summation from i equals zero up to infinity, because it still goes on infinitely. It doesn't matter if I have more infinite than I used to. I know that's kind of weird to think about, but it, in, infinity is infinity, my friends. Um, all right, so then we're gonna have, instead of x minus one, I know that x is i plus r, so I'm gonna have i plus r minus one. Okay, and then on the bottom, I have an r minus one here, right? But uh, r minus one, uh, if, if we think about a binomial, because that's what this is, right? This is an NCR, right? This is an NCR. Uh, think about your, your binomial expansion, right? In a binomial expansion, the, the terms, when, when we did Pascal's triangle, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Things that are on opposite ends, right, one space away from the end, are always going to be identical. Things that are two spaces away are always going to be identical. Okay, um, I'm not going to work through this for you, but I want you to go through kind of this thought process and see if you can determine that this term right here with the r minus one is the same thing as having the i. Or, or in other words, that r minus one plus i over r minus one is the same thing as r minus one plus i over i, okay? So I want you to think through that and see if you can come up with why that's the case. Again, thinking about the um, symmetricity of the NCRs, of, of the combinations that we're using here, okay? Uh, if you can't figure it out, let me know and I'll, I'll help walk you through it. But I, I think it's good for you to stretch your own brain a couple of t every once in a while, all right? So that then gives us the, uh, the, uh, the I here because we're saying those two things are equal. And then, of course, we have the t times 1 minus p. I'm just rearranging it here to the i power. Now, this, of course, 
matches what we have up there. And so we're gonna go ahead and write our, basically our final answer here, which is that g of t equals, now all this stuff from the summation of i equals zero to infinity all the way to that, that is one over one minus t times one minus p to the r. We still have this pt to the r, so the pt to the r is gonna be on top. And then on the bottom, we've got one minus t times one minus p all to the r power. And so what we see is we have now the PGF right here of the function. And that's, uh, that's good enough. That's as far as we need to go. Okay, now one last step we need to make is it has said provided that t my times one minus p is is less than one okay that of course is because one minus p here right in this formula right that's our r that's what it's being multiplied by every time remember we we've, we've been looking at these geometric sequences it gives us that provided so we don't really need to worry too much about that but it does say provided that t times one minus p is less than one so in order to do that, we now need to solve for t. So we're gonna divide both sides by one minus p. Because p is less than one, it's a probability, then I can divide both sides by one minus p, and it's not gonna affect the inequality because that's a positive number. So what I end up with is the absolute value of t is less than one over one minus p. And so that then is the restriction for this right here. If you want to rewrite it as a single fraction to the power of r, that's fine. Or you can leave it this way. I think both of them are, are clear. And that is what we're trying to accomplish. So there you go. That's the end of our negative binomial PGF. Uh, work through it a couple of times. Recognize this right here. Make sure that you're able to figure out why those two things are equal. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Nice job.